It's October and Zimbabwe is entering the rainy season. At Antelope Park, the wet weather offers a welcome break from the intense African heat. Out on the savannah, David Yulden and lion handler teacher Zashiri are working with Jabari and Jelani. The cubs are now six months old. Over the last few weeks, they've made good progress. Ah, we're going into the thick stuff. That's fine, we can go that way. Their confidence has grown, and the two brothers are happy to explore on their own. More interested in leading the walk than following. You're having fun, boys. Wow. Today, David's going to encourage the cubs to climb for the first time. This tree is a long-standing friend of, of the park. Many a lion has learned to climb on this tree. Um, they might be a little small at this age because it's quite steep. Uh, but it's really good. All the lions love it. From its branches, you've got a great view of the savannah. Um, they can see what game is here. So they really, really enjoy it. Not all lions can climb as it goes, but it's a good start. Jabari, the bigger and more confident cub, is the first to tackle the tree. Come on. There we go, there we go. Come on. Good boy. Not very really stable, are you? Come on. Good boy. There we are. Lions are actually a little nervous when they're in trees because they're not particularly steady. Not to be outdone, Jelani joins his brother. Come on, you can pull yourself up. Pull yourself up. In the wild, some lions climb trees to escape the hot ground and go in search of a light breeze to cool themselves down. Lions are not natural climbers. Ooh, you're right. But it's a useful skill to master. In 12 months' time, the cubs will learn how to hunt for themselves. And even at this young age, they're already discovering some new techniques. You see that Jabari is just ankle tapping uh, Jelani. That's obviously, it's part of their play, but it's an important part of their hunting strategy later on. Particularly with smaller, faster prey like Impala, you run up behind it, ankle tap it, it trips over, uh, and then you can grab it. So this is just the very, very first stirrings of that hunting technique coming in. You don't have to teach it. They just, it's natural. And provided you can give them an area where that play can happen, then that hunting instinct will develop. <laughs> They're having a great time. Yeah, really. <laughs> Adult lions must know their territory intimately. And the cubs are already investigating every sight, sound, and smell. You get quite a lot of mongooses around here. So there's a network of holes all over the place. Obviously, mongooses. That smells good. Uh, so quite often you'll find they'll just have a good dig around, see what they can smell. The cubs walk out every day. They still have a lot to learn. And on such little lions, every new adventure can take its toll. They're getting tired there. Part of the release program, more than 50 staff and volunteers work with lions of all ages. It can be dangerous, so for everyone's safety, the lions are housed in enclosures. Living in a group of four adolescent lions are brother and sister Sango and Swahili. They share a close bond, but Sango is about to reach sexual maturity, so must be moved away from his sister. 
Head guide Fanwell Nsingo has worked at Antelope Park for four years and he hand reared the two lions. Separating the two, um, Swahili is really going to miss uh, her brother Sango very much. And, uh, life is not going to be easy for him in the next uh, maybe two, three days. Today, Sango will be moved into the enclosure next door to share the territory of two older males. It's a dangerous introduction, which will be led by David. Morning. How are you doing? Good. Out in a wild situation, once Sango is kicked out of his pride, it's quite likely that he will encounter males who have been kicked out of a different pride and they'll form a coalition. Not necessarily the easiest introduction in lion society. Uh, males tend not to be so accepting of each other. To avoid exposing the lions to high levels of stress, David and his team must work quickly. OK, first step is just to put the three girls into their management enclosure and leave Sango in his main one. OK, there's one. All right. Come on. Come on. Right, one to go. Swahili is last to walk Sango, through, leaving Sango on his own. Good boy. Next stage, get those two boys into their management at the far side, and then we can prepare to put them together. Echo and Itosha are brothers. They are six months older than Sango. They're bigger and stronger. Hello. To help the introduction go smoothly, the brothers have been living in the enclosure next door to Sango. The males can see each other through the fence, but no one knows how they'll react when they come face to face. Hello. You've been nice to Sango, eh? Itosha in particular might be a bit more aggressive. Echo can be friendly, but also doesn't always take to new lions that well. So. We're going to use some meat to keep them occupied during the first introduction. We found many times in the past that that's just helped lower the aggression levels. Is Sango going in first? Worst case is they straight attack Sango, and Sango is unable to defend himself. At that point, we'll have to make quite a lot of noise to distract them from the fight. It's uh, just going to have to play this one by ear. But the odds are definitely stacked in these guys' uh, favour at the moment. OK. Everyone happy to do this? Yeah. Cool. Fingers crossed, everyone. Male lions are fiercely territorial. In the wild, they can fight to the death. Sango must stand his ground. Escape on Ghani now. Come on, boys. <laughs> Echo can't find his share of the meat and heads straight for Sango. <laughs> Your heart beats. Yeah, yeah it's my heart beats, yeah. When Sango was challenged, he protected his meat by turning his back on Echo and growling a warning. He stood his ground, and Echo quickly lost interest. For David and Fanwell, it's a huge relief. Today has gone really as well as I could possibly have hoped for. They do seem calm. They, there's no real aggression towards them. One thing here is once they've finished eating and they've got nothing else to do but realise there's a new lion in town, um, there might be a bit of aggression there. And certainly over the next two to three days, we're going to keep a very close eye. Um, from previous experience, it's not necessarily the first day that they pick on each other. It can happen afterwards. But it's definitely a good start. Africa is home to some of the world's most incredible wildlife. 
but it's a world that's under threat. Even the most iconic predator is in danger. In the wild, numbers of lions are in decline. At Antelope Park in Zimbabwe, the African Lion Rehabilitation and Release into the Wild program is trying to find a solution, using human handlers like British conservationist David Yulden to prepare captive bred lions for life in the wild. What I hope we can achieve is we can prove what we believe to be true, and that is that we can take lions and put them back into their natural environment so that they can survive there. And that's going to allow us to offer those parts of Africa that have lost their lions for various reasons an option of how to bring this incredible animal back into the place where it's supposed to be. 16 years ago, the program's founder, Andrew Connolly, lost his arm when he was injured by a male lion. But the incident only made him more respectful of this fearsome predator. I just cannot imagine Africa without lions. I mean, it's, it's like imagining London without Big Ben. Um, it just, it just, it's just not acceptable. So it's, it's, it's a major project. To me, it's, you know, I don't know how to really explain this. It's like the sun not coming up. If you haven't got, if you haven't got lions in Africa, it's just, just not Africa, is it? Andrew oversees the entire release program. Today, he's been called in by David because there's another problem with Sango and Swahili. The brother and sister had to be separated because Sangu is about to reach sexual maturity. The move went well, but in the days since the split, Swahili has been pining for her brother. She's refused to move from the fence line, and it's a situation that has to change. Today, Swahili and the two other females will be moved to the other side of the reserve. Andrew Connolly will oversee the walk to their permanent new enclosure. He's hoping they all want to go for a walk. These are the three for going out for a walk this morning. These are the three, yeah. It's Swahili, the one in the middle here, that uh, we just need to get away from her brother. All the while that she is using him as a source of her confidence, she is not bonding with the females, and that's what we need for her survival in the next stage of the release program. With lions of this age, which are coming up on two years old, as much as possible, we'll stay on a vehicle uh, and they'll follow. We might have to be on the ground at, at various points just to uh, usher them along a bit, um, but it's just a lot safer for us if we're on a vehicle. Everyone ready? This is the last time Swahili will ever see her brother. OK. Come on. Come on. Come, girls. OK. Come on. The other females already share a close bond, and they immediately start to play. Come on. But Swahili hesitates and begins to head back to Sango. Lions are social animals with strong family ties. Leaving her brother behind is a huge step. Come on. If we spend too much time around here, she's just going to go back Ooh. to Sango. Swahili, come on. As the two other females head into the bush, Swahili starts to follow. Here she is. They cover ground quickly. And soon, Sango is out of sight. For Swahili, the instinct to bond with her pride mates is too strong to ignore. So far, so good. Yeah, the, the worry that we had was, would Swahili move away from Sango? Um, she certainly looked a bit tentative. She looked back a few times, um, but just the sheer joy of being out of the enclosure and back in the natural environment. The time with the girl seems to have won over. Um, and that's what we want to develop. We want that bond with the girls just to increase with further opportunities for this. Play time. They're having such a ball now. This is what we dreamed about 
years ago when we first started this program. We're seeing lions back in their natural environment like this, and this is what's so exciting and so thrilling and so rewarding. I mean, this is what you're seeing now is really what it's all about. Is is really music, you know? I mean, it's, it's wonderful. It's so exciting. It really is. To be part of a successful pride, Swahili, Sahara, and Saraya must form a strong bond. Lions are cooperative hunters. To survive, the females must learn to work together. We've got some uh, zebra just at uh, the big dam here, so we're just going to move in that direction. Hopefully, the lions will follow. We'll see what happens. David climbs down to encourage the females forward. Come on. That's it. Good girls. Before they can make a kill, the lions must learn how to stalk their prey. Come on, let's go. Reading each other's body language, they have to work as Come one. Come on. With the zebra in their sights, Sahara takes the lead. But you see what she's doing there, going after the rope. The, the one on the right is flanking. The, the line on the right is actually doing a flank. You're seeing a net. They're splitting up now, as you would, literally, as you would in the wild. Sahara and Soraya act as a team. To make a kill, they need Swahili to work with them but she quickly loses interest. Without her support, the hunt fails. It's been a bit of a long walk for these girls uh, this morning, but it's nearing the end. Uh, just in this tree line here is their new home. Wahili must bond with the other females. If they don't learn to work together, they won't survive. As night falls, David receives some long-awaited news. Two adolescent lions have just arrived at the park. After an eight-hour journey from one of the program's other sites on the Zambian border. I've just had a radio call to say that uh, Batoka and Babesi, two 18-month-old lions, have just arrived. I'm very excited about them. I haven't seen them since ooh, about four months now. Um, so I'm expecting them to have grown quite considerably. So it's going to be really great to see them. How you doing? Evening, everyone. Are you feeling strong? David wants to get the lions out of their crates as soon as possible, and he's called in some project volunteers to do the heavy lifting. They're not going to be in the best of moods, um, to say the least, and just watch where you put your hands, OK? Obviously, because if they're a bit stressed, there could be claws coming out some of the holes. OK? OK. Cool. The two lions are 18 months old and are ready to enter the next stage of development, hunting at night. These two lions have both come to Antelope Park because here we're an enclosed reserve, which means that we can give them the freedom to roam around here at night uh, quite safely and they can practice their hunting. That isn't something that's possible at our Victoria Falls project. Okay, open it down. Okay, let's just get this open. Okay, let her out. This is Bubasi, right? Yep. David worked with Bubasi and Batoka on, when they girl. were cubs, but they Come haven't on. seen him for months Come and may not remember the bond Hello. they shared. Come, sweetheart. She is right at the back. Staring at me. Come on, that's it. Good girl. Good girl. Hello. Just not sure yet, are you? Oh no, dark and scary, huh? Come on. That's it, my girl. Hey, sweetheart. Hey. Nice and cautious. Hello, my sweet. That's it. Good girl. 
Someone just come behind and close. And if you can close that behind her. Okay, dope. Right, number two. Okay. Come on, boy. Come on. Hello, my boy. Your sister's over here. Butoka, come on. Hey, Tugs. Ooh, you're even bigger. There we are. Hello, beautiful boy. Cool. Someone please close this gate. And close that gate, please. Cool. There we are. Hello, you two. You're a good-looking boy, eh? They're looking in very good shape. Obviously, a lot larger than I remember. It'll be nice and quiet here overnight, and we'll check in on them in the morning. They'll be absolutely fine. But, yeah, I'm very happy to see them again. Tomorrow, David will go in with the lions. To work with them safely, he must reaffirm his place as leader of the pride.